Hello. Today I'd like to talk to you about accents in foreign languages, and in particular, one thing that you can do to immediately and instantly change your accent and, and hopefully lose a particularly strong American accent, if that's what you have, and to hopefully gain a better one, but at least to, to lose that particularly strong distinctive accent that, that a lot of learners tend to have. So, uh, as always, uh, I want to make a little preface by saying that I make videos for people who um, want to learn lots of languages. That's my standard audience, but I have other people coming in who are just eager to learn one language well, and so I want to give advice to, to both types of learners. What's uh, important to the people who just want one language also pertains to those who want to learn lots. So I will talk about things that are for just a specific language at first, and then I'll say that uh, I'm done with some general advice and what I have to say then pertains only to people who want to learn lots of languages. So if that doesn't interest you, you, you can leave at that point. But um, if you are interested, you're welcome to stay. Um, also, uh, as I just indicated, um, the most of my viewers are Americans, and the purpose of this video, that's all I can do, I'm American too, is talk about having an American accent and ways to reduce that. But I think that um, if what I have to say is valid, it can be flipped around, and those of you who are not American but want to develop an American accent, you might be able to do in reverse what I'm talking about. And those of you who are um, learning other languages, just, just using this, I think that the general advice, the general information I have is, is also valid. So uh, again, I want to talk about something that you can do to instantly and immediately change your accent. And what is that? Uh, let me demonstrate that. Um, I will say just a few lines in a couple of different languages, um, and I will do them in, in two different ways. I will do them when I hold up my left hand. I will do them um, with, with, I will probably still have uh, a distinctive and characteristic American accent in these languages, but when I hold up my right hand, um, it's going to be, I think, uh, much stronger. And I think that even if you, and you probably won't understand these languages or all of them, uh, when I speak them, uh, you should be able to hear, I hope, when I'm speaking with this hand up, that it, it sounds a lot more like a foreign language. Whereas when I speak uh, with this hand up, um, I'm using foreign words, but it still somehow sounds like American rhythm and intonation. Okay, so let me give a couple of demonstrations. Um, Yerutunyan I ja magu gavaru leski kak eta, kak da ja gavaru kak eta, minja jest amerikanski akcent, no kak da ja gavaru kak eta, duma juš to moj akcent bal šoj silneje. Ana atakallama lugata, jumken atakallama lugata arabija, mitla hava, wa jumken an atakallama lugata arabija aida mitla hava, and ma an atakallam mitla hava, ana uridan atakallam kama ana al arabija, ولكن عندما أنا أتكلم اللغة العربية هذا أنا أتكلم كما أمريكية. So I hope you heard that. Um, when I spoke with my right hand up, uh, I was, I believe, having a much stronger American accent um, than I did when I speak this way. Um, in my experiences as a teacher and observer of, of other learners, I would say that, I mean, we all have a foreign accent when we learn foreign languages. We keep our, our native intonation to a certain degree, but keeping it to the degree that I did when I hold my right hand up to a very high degree is something that I would say um, maybe 25 to 30 percent of, of people tend to have this strong of an accent and then others are along a, a, a line. Uh, people who have this strong of an accent, um, I would say that um, in my purely subjective, non-scientific, just personal observation. It seems to me that for some reason, women tend to have this kind of accent a bit more strongly. So maybe 25 or 30% of, of female American learners tend to have a, a particularly strong accent, um, whereas it's maybe slightly less, 20, 25% of, of, of men. But I, I think we all have, to a certain degree, this kind of accent. And then as we hear more and learn more and try to develop more of, of 
the accent of the language learning, we tend to go in the direction of, of my left hand. So uh, what was I doing? Well, if, if this is my mouth, okay? So um, if this is my mouth and these are my teeth and this is the my palate, the top of my mouth, and this is my tongue is down here, um, what I was doing is um, when, when I speak um, my normal American English accent, I would say that there is a, I want to call it a base of articulation, an axis around which things rotate, a, a fulcrum, uh, a place where the, the energy is kind of located. Uh, and the mouth, my mouth is in, in kind of a certain, I mean, the mouth is a plastic thing. We can make it wide or flat or here. Um, we can put the energy in a certain degree. In my basic American English, when I speak, I would say that my energy is here. It's up towards the top and the front. Um, you might speak it. You have a different accent, a different base of organization. Just because my American English is there doesn't mean that yours necessarily is either, but it's probably closer to there than it is elsewhere. And so what I was doing when I was speaking with my right hand up is I was speaking these foreign languages, Korean and Russian and Arabic. I was speaking them uh, with my base of articulation, my fulcrum, whatever you want to call it, exactly where it is when I speak American English. Whereas when I was speaking with my left hand up, I moved it. I had the basis of articulation. I had the focus of energy. I had the base somewhere else in my mouth. And so that's what you can do if you have um, uh, your accent. If you if you think or know that you tend to speak um, with a particularly strong American accent, one major reason you're doing it is that you're speaking from the same place that you always speak. And that's natural and normal and to be expected, particularly if this is your first foreign language and you, you know, you, you're just, you've always spoken with your energy here. And now you're learning all these rules of pronunciation and you're learning all these rules of different sounds. Um, but if you're still speaking from this space of articulation, it's hard to implement them. Uh, and so what you need to do in order to change your accent immediately is to shift that, move it somewhere else. Well, how can you do that? I, I don't think, I hope it's not terribly hard to, to just move it somehow, um, particularly if you are a parent or you read a book to a child. Uh, imagine that you're reading, you know, a, 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 um, a fairy tale, uh, something like the three little pigs or the Billy Goat's Gruff or something like that to a little kid. And so you have the wolf knocking at the door and the wolf pretending to be a, a mommy goat at one point and then speaking like the wolf at another point and talking to these goats. Um, and you want to entertain a small child. What would you do? You would make at a certain point, you would make that when the wolf is pretending to be the mommy goat, you would knock on the door and say, let me in, let me in with the hair. And when the wolf is saying, I'm going to huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. You're obviously Think about that. Just try to do something like that from your normal voice. You're obviously, to make these other sounds, you're putting all the energy, the focus, in some other point of your mouth, either back here or down here or down here. Now, obviously, what I just did, uh, speaking like the Billy Goat's Gruff for the, 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 the Big Bad Wolf, this is a caricature. These are cartoon voices. And obviously, you don't want to shift from um, a, uh, a strong American accent to a cartoon voice. Um, that might not be uh, much of an improvement. Um, but um, if I refer back to my own video on, on uh, the principle of exaggeration. Exaggerating is a good way to learn how to do something. Exaggerating, if, you, if you're unaware, if you, do, if you know that you have a particularly strong accent, one reason is that you haven't shifted your base of articulation and practicing shifting it by making cartoon voices is a good way to become conscious of this. Um, so if you want to really improve your accent other than just shifting it somewhere, um, there's this is a multi-stage process. It might sound simple, just shift your base of articulation. But I guess it's actually a pretty complicated process. If it weren't, if it were easy, you would have just have done it naturally, right? So the first step in doing this is you have to figure out where in your mouth your normal, natural American, if you are an American, base of articulation is wherever your base of articulation is. You have to figure out where that is. And that might not be easy. I mean, speaking is just something you've always done. It would be like saying, okay, 
tell me how you walk or how we do certain things that become automatic that are actually very complex processes. Walking is the most simple thing in the world once we know how to do it. But if you watch, again, referring back to little kids, seeing them fall down when they learn. If you know somebody who's had a stroke and needs to relearn how to walk, it's, it's a very complicated thing. So if you think about everything you do when you walk, talking is the same thing. Where is the energy? Where is the base of your mouth? So somehow you need to become conscious of that. You need to become aware of that. So just try to close your eyes, talk, think. Okay, just go through your mouth. Make your hand like this. And again, this is your teeth. This is the roof of your mouth called the palate. This is the back of your mouth. This is your tongue coming up here. Just try to, to kind of, you know, what have you ever done any of those meditation things when you do body sensing and you try to relax your feet, and relax your toes. As you speak, walk through your mouth and think about where is your energy? Where are you? articulating from where is the basis of your of your speech so figuring out where it is normally is um, the first thing that you you need to really do to switch away from that uh, i mean you could just switch it to any other place um, but knowing where it comes from and then um, you would ideally want to have um, a native speaker who speaks with an accent that you like, somebody you would want to imitate, who, who knows what you're doing, who won't think that you're crazy when you go to him or her and you say, can you do the same thing? Can you walk, can you do a body sensing thing in your mouth and figure out where your basis of articulation is? So when you, you're speaking your language, I wanna speak your language, where is your energy? Is your energy back here in the bottom of your throat? Is it up here towards in your nasal cavity? Is it somewhere in your area? Um, you can figure out where it is and if you can learn from a native speaker uh, where that energy is and you shift from where you normally put it to where they put it, that will be a huge step in the direction of improving your accent. Um, if you don't have access to an native speaker immediately, if you can't find this, again, I do think that um, at least, again, you, you need to be somewhat aware of where you're your energy is so that you can shift it away from there and keep it away from there and put it somewhere else. I, I have a feeling um, that the people who tend to have stronger accents uh, tend to speak more like I did when I have my right hand up. Um, they tend to be a bit farther along on the, the, the tone deaf spectrum. So maybe you have a hard time hearing it. Maybe you don't know that you're, you're speaking with that strong of an accent. Um, so that would be a challenge to figure out. But just if, if you have not worked on your accent, you probably could benefit somehow from moving away from that. Um, even if you don't have access to somebody who can explain to you where you should put it, I think that it, it would benefit you to move it away from your normal American base because uh, having a strong, uh, well, having any kind of strong accent is, um, let's, let's talk about accents, okay? Um, obviously, um, you want to have a nice accent, a good accent in any language that you're speaking. Um, having um, an ugly accent is, is ugly. You don't have an ugly face. You don't have ugly clothes. You don't have an ugly accent. Uh, having an ugly bad accent is is embarrassing. It 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 people makes people misunderstand you. Um, have some hard to understand you it makes them misunderstand you, which can be embarrassing, frustrating, potentially dangerous, depending on the situation. Um, and so that's not good. Uh, and I think, in particular, having a, a strong American or any kind of English accent in our day and age is probably the worst thing to have because so many of the people in the world are eager to learn English, and if they hear that you have a strong American or other kind of Eng English accent, it's kind of an invitation to them to try to speak English to you rather than letting you speak the foreign language to them. So I think that um, it's a particularly um, good thing to, to get away from. Um, so, uh, yeah, accents. Um, a lot of people, when they set out to learn foreign languages, um, for some reason have this ideal that they want to sound just like native speakers. Um, and I think that that ideal, obviously, if you want to, you want to take native speakers as your model, you want to imitate them to the best degree that you can. Um, you, but I, th I think that's just, I, I think that's not realistic to think that you're going to end up sounding like a native speaker. And I don't think it's particularly wise. I've said this before. I'll say it again. Um, if you sound exactly like a native speaker, um, then you'd better also have 
if, if you sound just like a native speaker, but you don't have a native speaker's vocabulary uh, and grammar and cultural knowledge, then people are going to think this you're stupid. They're going to think something's wrong with you. Uh, if you have all of that, if you have native speaker's pronunciation and grammar and cultural knowledge, um, then basically you are a native speaker or you, you can pass for a native speaker. Um, and uh, that might be um, good uh, to a certain degree if, if um, you're uh, uh, a spy. But basically the only way you can get that is if you um, are raised under those circumstances, uh, in which case speaking like a native speaker is not an achievement. It's everybody who comes from a, a native environment can, can speak with that native environment. And if you're putting out a lot of time and effort to learn a foreign language, then if you get, if you're lucky enough to sound that good, then what's going to happen is people, what you're going to miss out on is um, if you keep if you keep a nice accent, a nice refined accent, but it says that I come from somewhere else, um, then people will, um, we don't do this to, to get compliments, but it's nice when people really look at you with appreciation and they say, wow, you, you speak really well. And they really mean it. I mean, that's a really nice compliment for the hard work that you put out. And it's also, um, you can see in their face, um, they know it and, and they really appreciate that you've studied so hard to, to learn their language so well. Um, and so if you could possibly do that, um, you would miss out on that, which is um, a very rewarding thing to, to have to, to get that appreciation and, 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 and gratitude. Um, <clears throat> but as I said, I think that it's, it's largely delusionary because you're, you're not going to be able to do that. I mean, that once in a blue moon, you might find somebody who can uh, really develop such a wonderful, perfect accent. But um, if that's really your target, um, then again, you aim high to, to get near it, but you shouldn't really expect to hit it. Um, what I told you tonight, this evening, um, is a way to shift your accent and change it. Uh, and if you're getting away from your normal base of articulation, that's a step in the right direction. But it's only the first step. If you want to develop a nice, good accent, uh, apart from shifting away from where you normally speak when you speak your native language, um, there's basically three things that you need to have. And one of them is really not in your control. One of them is a degree of talent, musicality. Um, if you have a, a range of hearing that can perceive other sounds and a mouth that's more flexible in making them and somehow, um, yeah, you're just sort of gifted in, in that sense, the way some people are more gifted for, for music um, than other people, um, and then you might be able to do this uh, to, to a high degree. Um, on the other hand, uh, if you don't have that, you can still do the two other things to, to, to also high degrees, and they're also just, just as important. Um, and the second one of these is that if you can have, um, you need to get a basic understanding of phonetics. You need to understand where sounds are made in the mouth. A certain sound is made by putting the tongue and the teeth and the lips in a certain position and with a certain degree of tension and moving away from it. And if you can have that explained to you and shown to you, um, then you can come closer and closer to approximating that, uh, that kind of sound and rhythm. Uh, and then Beyond that, you need to do lots and lots and lots of deliberate practice, working on very small steps, one thing at a time, working at that. So really improving your accent, um, getting much better overall is, is not a quick fix tonight. I, I promised you you can do this one thing. You can shift away from your, your native zone and you will get a different accent. And if you have a, a strong, thick accent, it'll probably be better as long as you don't go so far as to make it a caricature. Um, but um, you need to work hard on any kind of accent you want to develop well. So that's what I have to say uh, that applies to anybody who's wanting to learn one particular language. Again, if you're not, a, you don't have polyitis, polyitis is the this obsessive compulsive desire to learn lots of languages, then what I have to say from now on probably won't be too interesting. You're welcome to stay if you like, but um, this is particularly for those of us who we're not just trying to learn one language. Like I spoke at the beginning, I spoke some Korean and some Arabic and some Russian. If you'd like to do that too, if you'd like to learn lots of languages, um, then I think that this concept that I'm, I'm turning around in my head right now as I talk to you about it, about the basis of articulation, 
um, and where you put it, where you have it. I think this is something that the degree to which as a polyglot or a polyliterate person, you can also keep this high in your consciousness, the better off you'll be. Um, with supposedly how many thousands of languages are, 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 are there? 9,000? I don't know. There's thousands and thousands of languages. I doubt each and every single language. There must be some overlap. There must be some five or ten languages that are spoken in exactly the same area. But all the languages that I know, Korean, Arabic, Russian, French, German, Latin, all of them, when I think about them, none of them have the same base, the same place of articulation. They're all slightly different. It's not just the place where it's located. It's also whether your mouth is flatter or wider or thinner, um, whether you're pushing air. There's, there's just a different feel um, when you're speaking them. Uh, and people often ask, polyglots, you know, don't you confuse different languages? Don't you mix them up? And I always say, no, I, I just don't. I mean, to me, different languages are as different as different individuals or as different as different people. And if I know them, I'm not going to mix them up. But I do think that one way um, that I avoid mixing them up is because if I'm highly conscious of where the base of articulation is, what the feel in my mouth is when I speak this language or that language or the other language, it's, it's totally different. Um, and so just this, this feel of speaking uh, the language um, is 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 different for each language. So it's, it's not just speaking a foreign language versus speaking your native language, but it's finding that specific feel, that specific place, whether it's further down the back of your throat, whether it's spoken with a slightly wider mouth, whether it's spoken again with more energy pushed towards the, the nasal cavity, but um, the degree to which you can do this um, consciousness raising exercise, location exercise. Um, if this is not something you've thought about before, uh, I would encourage you to try this with, with all the languages that you know um, and just do that walk through and think, okay, when I'm, when I'm speaking Italian or when I'm speaking Polish or whatever language, where apart from my um, awareness of the pronunciation, where, where is the energy coming from? Where is it located? Where is the focus? And I do think that all the study of, 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 of phonetics, all the study of, of the laws, okay, this sound should be made that way. They're just, there's, when, when you speak from the wrong base of articulation, particularly when you speak from your native base of articulation, you might have an intellectual concept of what the different sounds should be, but it's pretty much impossible to make them. So when you shift to a different place, it's, even if it's not the right place exactly, not the place where, um, somebody who, um, whose accent you like would say that they have their their energy. Uh, I just think it's much easier to implement all the specific individual laws of, of sound production that you might have learned. So, um, yeah, I, th I think it behooves us all to try to be aware where in our mouths the energy are. And in particular, yeah, if, if all my viewers, this wonderful community I have of people who contribute uh, to the, the comment section, um, if people can become aware of where it is in their mouth uh, when they talk um, and maybe share that with each other. I mean, I, this, I don't think this is something I've really ever heard talked about very much. I mean, um, any introduction to pronunciation will talk about, yeah, I mean, this the sounds, this is made like this sound, this should be made here a little bit, but how you should hold your mouth, where your energy should go, and what what area you should be, you know, the, 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 the basis, the fulcrum, the axis should be. Um, that's something maybe we can get out there a bit more um, and, and know where should, when I speak Russian, where should I, where should I be? Should I be low back? Should I be high back? Should I be up front? Where, where should I be? So um, yeah, if we could all become a bit more conscious of this and, and share this, maybe we could all, uh, all profit from it. I hope you've profited uh, from this video. Uh, I hope it's been useful and valuable to you. And I thank you for listening and I will talk to you again next week.